ओके ओके तो स्टार्ट डियर फ्रेंड वेलकम यू ऑल ऑन थर्ड सी एम ऑफ कॉलेज ऑफ जी पी एंड दिस वेबिनार एवरी मंथ वी आर ऑर्गेनाइजिंग एंड दिस इज फॉर द एम्पावरमेंट ऑफ द फैमिली फिजिशियन विच विल हेल्प अस टू सर्व अवर पेशेंट फॉर्चुनेटली वी हैव विथ अस अवर सेक्रेटरी जनरल आई एम ए डॉक्टर अनिल नायक साहब तो आई रिक्वेस्ट हिम टू से फ्यू वर्ड एंड गिव अस ब्लेसिंग फॉर द वेबिनार Okay, good evening, everybody. Thank you for inviting me in third CME program of uh, IMA College of General Practitioner Gujarat State Branch, particularly in pediatric updates. You have two good topics. One is on fever on with rash, and other is fever of short duration. And both the academician Dr. Bardebai and Dr. Yagnesh Mupat have a wide experience. of pediatric uh, in teaching and in clinical practice also so i welcome and uh, to dr kamlesh bhai dr balde bhai dr agnesh bhai uh, our uh, president of uh, college of gp dr darbar saheb uh, dr uh, madhav bhai desai sir and all the delegates including dr kasundra from rajkot welcome you all uh, it is uh, a great pleasure for me because since last uh, few months our uh, college of gp has started such type of webinar to increase the knowledge of general practitioner in pediatrics and various subjects so it is good sign for gujarat also because uh, in past few many years cgp is not doing uh, such type of webinar just organizing one or two conferences all over the gujarat so dr jason darbar has started a new Era of College of GP, and I congratulate him, and I also thankful to all the speaker who have given their precious time to teach and to give knowledge to our uh, general practitioners. Thank you very much. And as you know, day by day, the number of general practitioners is decreasing. So we have to save general practitioners, save tiger. This is the government uh, slogan, but we have not seen the dinosaur. so our children will not see tigers <laughs> but we have seen many gps so we need to save gps so general practitioner is the pioneer uh, in medical practice and uh, because in personally i believe that day by day attacks on the doctors and medi practitioner increase because of lack of general practitioner when general practitioner was there he was the uh, link between uh, patients and consultants now that link had been broken because of lack of general practitioner and uh, directly consulted by the physician so there is a trust between the doctors and patient decreases day by day because of lack of time of the consultants so i request you oh, yeah, more and more people should uh, start their general practice don't go into the government job uh, or earning 30 to 40000 but you will have a good uh, Uh, practice if you start with the knowledge and general practitioner is the family physician second name is family physician so he is the person who have a direct touch with all the families of the uh, india so i request you all to increase knowledge of the general practitioner and increase number of the general practitioner thank you for inviting me and giving me an opportunity to say few words in front of this uh, august gathering thank you very much jai iima jai jai gari gujarat Thank you, Naik sir, for your blessings and your presence in presence and boosting our, our moral and uh, activity. Now over to Dr. Kamlesh Naik to conduct this EM. Thank you. Thank you, Jasun Darbar sir, for giving me such chance. I welcome all of you, both the speakers and the persons here uh, today. This is the third virtual CME, and that is the pediatric update from the College of GP IMA GSB. Today we have two eminent speaker. First is Dr. Baldev Prajapati sir. He is a MD pediatrician with gold medalist and HOD and professor of G and GSS Medical College Hospital and Research Center. And I welcome uh, Dr. Baldev sir to say uh, to say few words or show his topic. Thank you, Baldev sir. Yes. 
Should I start it? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Before I share my slides, Office Bearers of IAB, Jandar College of General Practitioner, Dr. Jasam B. Darbar, Dr. Kamlesh Bhai, Dr. Dire, and my friend, very eminent physician of this, I will say not only Ahmedabad, but Gujarat State or across the country, very good academician, Dr. Madhya Vidyasai, everybody knows him very well. And my friend and president, uh, Dr. Anil Bhai, my colleague, Dr. Yagnish Popat from Rajkot, and all other friends on the screen and off the screen. Let me express a word of gratitude to all the friends and particularly the office bearers, especially Dr. Madhavi Desai, for inviting me and giving me this opportunity. The topic allotted to me is the fever and the skin rashes. I'm sure that it is very common situation for the general practitioner, anyone pediatricians to come across in the practice. So with that idea, let me share my presentation. I hope that my slides are seen. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Let me clear my screen. Your screen is visible, sir. Yeah, yeah. But, but uh, on my on my screen, not many big pictures are seen. I want to hide them. Okay, okay. One minute. Anyway, uh, I wanted to remove this, uh, all the pictures of the people on the screen. Anybody technical person can help me? Mr. Rahul. Because then I will not be able to read the slide. Hello. 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 Rahul? Hello. Uh, uh, Rahul is a technical person. He is uh, there in the yeah. group. Hello. Hello. Uh, yes. Rahul, the, on my screen, I am uh -huh. Dr. Baldev Prajapati. Uh -huh. The uh, pictures of all the people on the screen are seen, so that I am uh, slide is not clear. What should I do? Sir, sir, tamhe next slide push karo to aaj hatu re se. Acha is it? Ha. Scroll karo. Scroll. PDF or just scroll karo. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Suppose if I click it, it is in chat, pin, show non video participants, show shelf view. Anybody should be clicked over here? Because then. Yeah. Rahul, bhai. Okay, 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 it is clear now. 
હા સૌથી ઉપર વ્યૂ હશે વ્યૂ માં ક્લિક કરો એની વેન યુ નાઉ ઇટ ઇઝ ક્લિયર ઓકે સોરી ફોર ધીસ ડિલે ફોર ફ્યુ મિનિટ્સ એનીવે ફ્રેન્ડ્સ ઓલ ઓફ યુ નો ધેટ ફીવર વિથ ધ સ્કીન રેશ એઝ આઈ વોઝ ટોકિંગ ધ વેરી કોમન સિનેરિયો ઇન आवर ડેલી પ્રેક્ટિસ એન્ડ રીઝન ઇઝ યુ નો ઇટ્સ અ મેજર કોઝ ઓફ એન્ઝાયટી એન્ડ કન્સર્ન નોટ ઓન્લી ધ પેરેન્ટ્સ બટ ઇવન ધ ટ્રીટિંગ પર્સન all of us know that skin rash is an important marker for several conditions i think that's very important most occasions the skin rashes are benign most of the time they are viral exanthema and self limiting but please keep in mind which is not to be missed by any clinician that at times it can be due to some potential serious conditions that we have to identify and there are the meningococcemia very important leukemia even kawasaki disease juvenile idiopathic arthritis sle and so on so friends please remember that ski is a mirror of many internal ailments and which may manifest as a rashes so rashes probably sometimes may be the very important marker now what are the types of rashes maybe the macule what we mean by the macule they are the very flat lesions of some change in the color maybe the brown maybe the pink maybe even some red color and papules are raised which you can feel they are flat and top lesions less than 5 cm in size and when they see these lesions are more than 5 mm in size and raised with the rounded configuration we call them the nodules and lesions with a fluid field less than 5 cm in size we call them the vesicles and when they are bigger in size we call them the bullae and when such fluid field fluid field lesions are pus field we call them the pustules and very classically bleeding skin manifestations which we should keep in mind they are the pitichi they are non blanchable pin head size almost 2 mm in size purpura are again the skin lesions for bleeding but they are superficial size is bigger compared to the pitichi that is 2 to 5 mm but ecchymoses are skin lesions for bleeding but they are deep in nature and bigger in size so i think just simply if you try to understand that what type of the skin lesion skin rashes that will give the idea that will give to some thoughts that what is likely reason and what is serious and what is this supplementing let me start with very simple i think if you just look at the figure many of the friends should be able to identify this is the measles very highly contagious starts with some probable symptoms of high grade fever cough coryza rhinitis conjunctivitis later on on third or fourth day there is some rash on in the mouth or oral cavity what we say the coplic spot commonly seen on third or fourth day of fever particularly on the at the in the buccal mucosa at pre molar level if some pediatrician has seen i think very difficult to get it but if you get it is said that it is a very important pathognomonic marker for the measles otherwise the rashes again start to spread from the fourth day may start from the face neck and then all over the body in five days time rashes may persist for about a week and after that five to seven days they disappear leaving the post major staining and then discamation of the skin i think this is very important classical picture of the measles and every practitioner should be accustomed but you know that every in every patient there may not the classical following probably the vaccination may be the incomplete measles and then it may be difficult sometimes you can associate the thrombocytopenia may cause the hemorrhagic lesion measles so all these different varieties we should be able to understand and accordingly we can plan for this further management 
Again, this is not uncommon picture in our daily practice. And all of you know that this is the varicella or the chickenpox. Most common age, five to 10 years. Here, the rashes may appear usually on the next day of the fever. And they are the very prolactic lesions. May start on the trunk and rapidly spreading toward the extremities and all over the bodies. Friends, please remember that these lesions evolve very fast from pustules to clear through to the vesicles and then crusted vesicles. But a very characteristic marker, I would say clinical marker, is the leomorphic skin lesions. What we mean by the leomorphic? Multi-morphological lesions are seen at a time. You may be able to see some new erupting lesions. You can see when the vesicles or some crust formation, that means different morphology is seen at a time. And that is the very classical picture of the chickenpox or the varicella. Commonly, the lesions will be some hundreds, but in the breakthrough chickenpox, the lesions will be very few. And then probably when with the competent pediatrician, it may be difficult. Is it chickenpox or something else? But I'm sure that if you are aware of all these different varieties, you can locate the condition. You know the, why the varicella is very dangerous? Even it can cause the congenital varicella syndrome, particularly when the mother develops the varicella in the first trimester. And I think that is the importance of the varicella vaccine in the adolescent girls, so that this problem can be avoided. Because it is very, uh, very difficult situation with the multiple malformations, with the limb hypoplasia, digital defects, even eye problems, cataract and cortical atrophy, and even the limb deformities. So I think it's very uh, tied with the multiple malformations. And very simply, it can be avoided by the varicella vaccine in the adolescent girl, so that in the future, she will not get the child with this malformation. At the same time, please remember that for two conditions, there is no maternal protection. One is the varicella and second is the pertussis. And both the conditions, if they develop in the neonates, they are always serious. Here, neonatal varicella, particularly is vulnerable when it develops to the mother. Five days before to two days after the delivery, there are very much chances that that baby is going to develop the neonatal varicella. And this condition is severe. Many a times I will say even fatal. Of course, now the just immunoglobulin and other treatment parts are available, but still, condition itself is the moribund. In the adults, I think these lesions you must have seen, and even the older children, and this is the herpes zoster. Basically, lesions in a very specific dermatomes. And when it becomes difficult, if the person presents to you with the severe pain, even not variable, before the eruption. And here we are not sure that the pain is due to what. But within few hours or next day, when the person presents with this type of lesions, you become clear, oh, this is the herpes zoster. As I said, it starts with a very severe pain, a very specific demarcated dermatome region. I think that if you can define clinically, it, that will help you. Of course, other lesions are going to be there. And nowadays, for your information, even for prevention of herpes zoster, this zoster vaccine is available. And it is recommended above the age of 50. Probably many of us might be falling in that category and we should take it. But the reason is, you know, herpes zoster itself is very difficult to bear even the pain and so many other neurological problems or complications known following this disease. You must have seen some of these type of pictures, but probably label something else, just like measles, but which disappears within three days. And therefore, we call it three-day measles, or even the rubella. It's a different virus, please. I think the rubella virus should be taken very seriously by everybody. Pediatrician, 
obstetrician, physician, or I would say any practitioner, even the general practitioner. The reason is, you know, the postnatal, this rubella may not be the problematic, but particularly if the mother develops the rubella during this pregnancy, it may result in the congenital rubella syndrome. And all of you must be aware that with this keeping in mind the prevention of this congenital rubella syndrome, even government of India has started the campaign of the MR vaccine to prevent, to targeting particularly the these two serious viral infections, measles and rubella. And I think this, uh, as a clinician, we should be aware of it because once it develops congenital, it's a very serious problem. The form of the deafness is very common. Congenital heart disease, most common. PD and the cataract, which you can see, this is photograph of one of my own patients, which I have seen long back. But even known with this uh, uh, macrocephaly, splenomegaly, hepatomegaly, thrombocytopenia, and lot many issues. But the best way you can prevent it by simple rubella vaccine. And therefore, MR or MMR vaccine, every person should practice. Either he is a general practitioner, pediatrician, physician or obstetrician. And repeatedly emphasizing the reason, I wish that the message should go very clear and bold that vaccine is available, disease should not develop in the society. And if it is, probably we are responsible for that. Another similar viral infection, I'm sure that what when we were students to consider that it's not so common in our country, but yes, very frequently we do come across that is the infectious mononucleosis. Usually here, initially fever looks like viral, but it continues for long, mixed together, which is not the characteristic. Then thing for the EBV, particularly may present with the pharyngotonsillitis. Somebody will consider even tonsillitis and offer the antibiotics. But other features, if you go in the details, maybe the periorbital edema, generalized tender lymphadenopathy, Hepatosplenomegaly, particularly the splenomegaly. And here the spleen is so soft. So soft, friends, I want to draw attention that even the rough handling can cause rupture of the spleen. So soft. And therefore, I think that we should keep in mind. And by chance, if you get when prolonged viral, and in that case, if you get the epitrochlear lymph node, I think that's a point to consider that this is this uh, absent by virus. Rept of the thing, macular rash. Even many a times the fever is there and somebody is offered the ampicillin or amoxicillin, next day patient comes back with the rashes. I think very good important if, uh, clinical clue for the diagnosis of the BB. This type of the rashes, classically somebody has blocked this slapped over the cheek and therefore it is called as slap cheek syndrome or even the appearance due to this fifth disease or infectiousism due to the parvovirus B19. Again, parvovirus B19 is not so uncommon. Not common in our daily practice, but yes, it is seen. And that is mainly why we are afraid. Probably otherwise it is benign. But in immunocompromise or some of the patients, it may go for complication like ITP, aseptic meningitis, very important or transient aplastic crisis, particularly in a case of chronic hemolytic anemia like thalassemia, it can go for the HLH, you would have the spitalis or even the myocarditis. Looking at these complications, we are afraid of the disease and therefore we should be able to diagnose earlier so that we can manage it appropriately. I think this is, these pictures are not uncommon in our daily practice. I remember almost more than 10 years back, I was attending the conference in Kerala. And one of my friend pediatrician was talking on this disease, hand foot mouth disease. And some 100, 150 cases he has seen in one season. It was a surprise to me. But I'm sure you will agree with me that now this is not uncommon for us also. It is very frequently with the Coxsackie A16. Antrovirus 171 is very important. This virus it should be known to us. Usually it is mild disease with the fever and these types of rashes or the oropharynx, scattered vesicles on tongue, buccal mucosa, palate, lips, 
particularly hands and feet even, or the buttocks, very common sites. Most of the times it is benign, but it is said that whenever such patient presents to you with a CNS complication, we should be afraid of it and that may be the enterovirus 71. Because not so common, uncommonly, but it is known to cause the complication like neurological problem, stop, and even the rapid death. And therefore, nowadays, with the availability of this biofire, any patient following this type of the hand foot disease, presents to you with the CNS manifestations or cardiovascular, I think immediately we should go for the biofire and can offer the, the a very competent uh, support therapy. Uh, I'm sure that we have started to see these type of the patients and it is expected that in the within few days, you may get more numbers of such patients. Starts with a very high grade fever, kills or ligers, may present to you with this type of rashes, and later on may go for the problem of complications like leaking or even this shock or problem and complication and the disease is the dengue fever. All of us know as I was talking, with the high grade fever, blanchable rashes, measly look what we say is very important. But friends, remember particularly this respiratory like viral, that nasal discharge, cataract are typical. These type of the discharge, these type of the manifestations are not in the dengue. And therefore, any patient looking like a virus, but not having this type of the rhinitis, nasal discharge or so, suspect that this may go for the dengue and probably rashes and the other manifestations will make the point clear. Particularly when the patient complains of severe headache and retroorbital pain or photophobia, even mild and arthralgia. Please keep in mind, and these of the rashes, as I described, is seen in the case of dengue. I, I would like to share with uh, one patient, which uh, I'm sure that uh, not so uncommon in the practice, but very attention drawing, which uh, I have seen in the GCS uh, probably one or two years back. Three months old child was hospitalized for the fever and cough. Somebody considered that this is the irritable child and not taking feeds properly. Therefore, like with the bronchiolitis and started the salbutamol by the nebulizer and even some antibiotic. And I remember the next day child was referred to the GCS hospital with generalized hyperpigmentation. And on a clinical examination, nothing abnormal. And this was the picture. I remember that the mother was telling, because mother was Hindi speaking, she said, sir, my child was completely gone. I said, how did And that was a very important clue for me. And I told my resident that go for these investigations. Before that, I got the information, you have a very important clue that mother had the chicken kunya, and she showed me this case paper from our medicine department. Having this clue, we went for the chicken kunya PCR, it was confirmed. Friends, what I want to share with you, in infants and the newborns, these type of the fever and rashes is the very, very characteristic of chicken kunya, not uncommon. I think in a year, once or twice, I must be getting this type of the babies. And therefore, I thought that let me share with you. If you are sensitized, I'm sure that you will also get these type of the patients and we can manage it properly. Scarlet fever, again, when we were student, it was said that this is not common. It is in the Nelson and for the Western countries, but not so. We definitely do come across. Starts with the upper respiratory by group streptococcal, fever and exudative pharyngitis, particularly an exotoxin mediated disease, and therefore these of the rashes are very classical. We start with sudden onset of fever, throat pain, malaise, headache, rash particularly on the next day, and that too often begins around the neck and spreads over the trunk and extremities. And if you look at the rashes, they are diffuse, finely papular erythematous, sometimes bright red discoloration of the skin and blanching on pressure. Very important point that they are seen on the creases of elbows, axillary, and groin. And characteristic is goose pimple appearance. If you are trying to feel, they are very spiky. You feel that they, they, they cause the heart to your palm. That is very classical. I think, you know, the goose pimple, that is the uh, 
particularly this uh, color for people they are using i think uh, those who are furniture preparing to make it this one the very polish they are using these are the papers that this conversion starts later on and even the strawberry tongue is the very characteristic i have seen even the, not only streptococcal but even staphylococcal causes this type of the scarlet fever and that we should be able to identify i am sure that any child less than 5 years of age presents with this type of the again strawberry tongue this type of the rashes after the dv course so there is the exfoliation some changes over the nails what we see the blue lines and i think it should not be difficult for the pediatrician to know as i am sure even the devour the hands or even the swollen small joints or crack clips which is the very characteristic of kawasaki disease please friends remember kawasaki is now not uncommon particularly age is less than 5 years and fever of more than 5 days duration and no response to antibiotic and very classically these are the rashes and what i showed even the change in the eyes that is the non i will say exudating and particularly even the very classical features if you try to locate that is reactivation of the bcg or even the peri anal discamation it is said that it is very classical which which we should be able to uh, the appreciate and i'm sure that if you at least you can diagnose kawasaki and you start the immunoglobulin future complications of the coronary can be prevented again this disease what we used to say that it is uh, not so common in gujarat yes but particularly the person who has visited some forest or jungle or gone for trip and comes back with the fever and these type of the rashes is keep in mind recurrent infection very important and even single tablet of doxycycline can offer it and even who has recommended that if you have the doubt for the recurrent fever or it is in differential diagnosis at any age you should always go for the doxycycline and if the miracle response is seen no need to go for investigation it's a recurrent disease and i think we should be familiar with these other presentations of course we should not forget it this is the following the chicken pox this fasciitis is a very uh, i will say alarming and life threatening condition if you come across best way to immediately refer to the competent person either the physician or even the pediatrician and he should also take the help of the surgeon remove the dead tissues and offer the very appropriate antibiotics so that you can prevent the uh, mortality and even the major complications any child with a fever and these are the rashes always keep in mind the meningococcal somehow not so common in gujarat that's all but people say that sporadically yes we see this uh, meningococcal and now you know that most effective vaccine is also available that we should keep in mind this even staphylococcal and streptococcal toxic shock syndrome any patient with fever and some skin lesions straight away within short time goes for the shock please keep in mind staphylococcal and streptococcal shock syndrome which i must have seen at least four five patients and very appropriate treatment can save the children even mycoplasma is not uncommon that pneumonia with the fever not that problematic pneumonia but yes eyes and these are the skin lesions and very simply macrolide is it from ice drug of choice and you can save the child from problems and complications this child was from the thara very bad you can see the leaf adenopathy and scabies this was the chest x ray we went for the ct we went for the gastric aspirin got the ap and friends that was the mbr tuberculosis with the hiv and these are the skin lesions i think from different at the spot we should suspect it and go for the confirmation these are the various skin manifestations of hiv which all of you any oral thrush if you don't have the answer keep in mind hiv in older children or adults kaposis sarcoma yes seborrheic dermatitis eczema psoriasis aphthous ulcers herpes simplex herpes zoster boreas contagiosum wards i think all wait thing for the hiv this was a 4 years old child presented with a fever of 3 and 1/2 months hospitalized in one corporate hospital for one month all the type of the i will say antibiotics were given 
mother came to me with the just a video and she showed that the child is having this type of the rashes only at the time of fever and as the fever comes down within an hour all the rashes disappears and when i saw the reports there was a thrombocytosis leukocytosis acute phase reactants were high and very lot many investigations were done but friends what i want to share with you keep in mind this is the evancing or vanishing skin rashes very classical i will say pathognomic characteristic of systemic onset juvenile idiopathic arthritis joint pain may take even the three months or six months after this don't wait for the joint pain fever and this rashes classically fever at the time of fever vanishing or evancing during after this fever that is the whole mark for diagnosis of this condition and that's the point which i wanted to share with you any older child adolescent girl particularly female child present with fever and malar rashes rule out the systemic lupus erythematosus early diagnosis early effective treatment or management can change the life scenario of the person and therefore it is very important for the clinician general practitioner to diagnose to suspect and to defer in time and to manage the patient very efficiently so that the whole outcome can be changed not uncommon the pediatric practice that these are the rashes particularly the buttocks or even the lower extremities which are the very pedicure and that is the hanas colnian purpura vasculitis syndrome most of the times it is benign but complications are known particularly in the form of the hematemesis bleeding per rectum or even the mimic surgical condition of course more problem or complications the form of the torsion of testes or perforation have been reported but that we should keep in mind any thema nodes are very painful nodules of the sheen of the tibia and that is the correct i think from the outdoor you should be able to diagnose maybe the group is streptococcal even tuberculosis most commonly i see with the tuberculosis or even the sarcoidosis of course with some drugs also it is known and probably maybe the last one or two slides this was the 10 years old child illness of 11 days again this child was having the fever and vomiting some skin rashes child had the convulsions child was an antiepileptic drug and following that child had the rashes after few weeks but it was following the picnic so it was considered to some other reason meanwhile child had the leukocytosis eosinophilia even the jaundice enzymatic reactions and even the dengue investigation bills and so many things were done i remember again this patient was in corporate hospital every specialty person was there hematologist gastroenterologist infection disease specialist and so many people but i what i thought that if you put on the paper that this patient is having the multi system reaction after four weeks of starting the phenytoin in this patient and that was a very classical picture of the dress syndrome what is dress syndrome drug reaction with even the eosinophilia and systemic symptoms and classically any drug can cause it very specifically anti epileptic drugs and after few weeks it starts maybe with the lymphadenopathy fever and all the even multiple system involvement liver renal pulmonary leukocytosis eosinophilia is the characteristic from which you should be able to diagnose stop the drug most of the time benign within few weeks the patient recovers but of course we should keep in mind goes for any problem or complication may require the steroids i am sure that very simple condition but known condition if you are aware you can diagnose and you can manage the patient very efficiently at least i must have seen four to five patients of this syndrome and i have seen that most of the day recover just by stopping the drug and symptomatic therapy don't do any heroic thing i think that's very important message in such of the conditions and thank you very much friends for giving this opportunity i thought that the particular the group is of the general practitioner friends keeping in mind i selected some of the presentations that it should be very useful to them in their daily practice i am sure that uh, it should be useful and uh, if you translate in the daily practice uh, it makes difference in our interpretation diagnosis and ultimate management and outcome i think as already dr anil was talking i agree with him that uh, gradually this uh, species of the general practitioner is disappearing from the society and that is very dangerous sign it's not good sign 
On the contrary, we are, you know, always it is the human nature. We consider that this is the development, but I don't understand the development in which direction. The specialization, super specialization. One of my senior pediatricians of this country, Dr. Amrekar sir, many a time said that the time will come, the time looking at only right upper extremities and not the left upper extremities, but the left and the right hand. I think that super speciality is very dangerous. On the contrary, somebody is asking me, suppose in the future, if the nature even gives me the choice, in the future also, I would like to be the general pediatrician or general physician. I think not at the cost of the general, the super specialization. With even the good general knowledge of the subject, if you go for the specialization, of course it is welcome and I'm sure that it is useful. Here, therefore, if somebody is preferring to go for general practice, I will say, general, I will say practitioner, not even the pediatrician, I'm sure that this is the demand or requirement of this hour. And I'm, I, wish, I think we should encourage to our this new generation students that they should go and I'm sure that they will, their future is not bad. I can see that future is bright. I'm sure that my senior friends agree with me. Thank you very much for at least inviting me in this August gathering of the friends. And ultimately, I should appreciate uh, Dr. Madhebe for giving me this opportunity. Thank you very much, friend. Thanks a lot. Over to you. Thank you, Baldev, sir, for your nice talk. Apni doctor, I'm a family physician. Now, our next speaker is Agnes Popper, sir. He is the director of Home Boy Baby Care Hospital at Rajko and president AOP Gujarat 2016. And he will talk on fever of short duration. Please welcome, sir. Yeah, good afternoon, all. Uh, let me first thank the organizers uh, from the College of General Practitioners, Dr. Darbara. Dr. Kamlesh uh, in particular. I'm also happy today that the few of my teachers, Dr. Baldevai as well as Dr. Mahadev Desai, both are here from whom I had learned a lot in the uh, UG and PG uh, time. And uh, even today, we are learning a lot from my senior teacher, Dr. Baldevai Prajapati. Uh, uh, with this, uh, let us start with the presentation. In next few minutes, I will be talking on the Fever of short duration. Friends, these are the most common causes of fever of short durations. It could be a viral infection. It could be just a malaria, typhoid, or a dengue, or a bacterial infections like tonsillopharyngitis, sinusitis, acute otitis media, or urinary tract infection. It could be generalized infections like septicemia, bacteremia, or a vaccine-associated fever. It can be adjusted because of an heat-related illnesses. So this is a wide range of uh, etiological issues related with the fever of short duration. How do we approach? Friends, in any case of fever, a serial record of fever is mandatory. Single reading has no meaning. We should look at the trend of fever, whether it is increasing, decreasing, persistent, and what is the response to the antipyretic? that should be recorded. The another important thing regarding the uh, fever is uh, the condition of the child between the two episodes of the fever. If the child is well, we have a different uh, etiological issue uh, organisms. And if the child is not well, then we have a different issues. Associated signs and symptoms apart from fever should be looked at and the vitals should be checked. All this information under the background of this age of the child, immunocompetent or immunocompromised status of the child, vaccination status of the child, with the epidemiology of the area and whether the child got this infection from the community setting or a nosocomial, it is a nosocomial infection that should be known. So how do we approach on day one? Just look at the child, whether the child is well looking or ill looking. If the febrile child is well looking, only symptomatic management, good hydration and nutrition, just wait and watch. But of course, do explain the red flag signs to the relatives so that in case any of that is appeared, uh, they can approach you at earliest. If the febrile child is ill looking, any of the red flag signs are already present, then child requires an urgent hospitalization and investigations. 
There are few exceptions to, the, uh, to the, this rule. Febrile neonates, less than three months, immunocompromised child, or under the situation of outbreak of any particular disease. In these situations, one should be cautious even from the day one. Now, immune status of the child is very important. Let us understand this by the different case scenarios. A three-year-old boy with a fever of two days duration, 100 to 103 degree fever. Here, the immune status of the child is normal. So, the, it, it is likely to be because of some environmental agent, usual agent, and they are susceptible to the usual line of therapy. Of course, it is affected by the outbreak situation or an epidemic situation. Another uh, case where a 12-year-old girl who is already admitted in PICU on ventilator, on urinary catheters, central lines, multiple antibiotics are already given, develops a fever of 102 on day 21 in the ICU. Here the immune status may be normal or abnormal, but one should consider hospital-acquired infection, multiple drug resistant organisms, or even a non-infectious cause of the fever. Now, another situation where two-year-old female with ALL already on chemotherapy comes with a fever of 102 of two days duration. You remember the immune status is abnormal. The organisms can be either environmental or hospital acquired. There are likelihood that the opportunistic infection is there. Of course, and here one should also remember the host response is unusual. So if you, if you know a immune status of in that particular child, in a different situation, one should consider different organisms as well as the different therapy. So these are the, some of the red flag signs one should be aware of. If disproportionate heart rate or respiratory rate, differential body temperature, affected circulation characterized by the cold extremities, poor capillary refill, chest retractions, meningeal signs for presence of purpuric spores, or partial membrane. If any of this sign is present, one should be very cautious from day one itself. So the message here is the day one or two, localization of infection is often not possible. Establishing diagnosis may not be possible, but one should definitely identify and stabilize a sick child, and that is the priority. Decide on day one or two whether it is safe to withhold antibiotics or not, and whether there is any urgency or need for the investigations. Now, few differences between the viral fever and the bacterial fever. Viral fever affects the multiple system of the body. Fever is high at the onset, but settles down within the next five days. Child is comfortable during interfebrile period. Similar cases are usually present in other family members or in the surrounding. CBC here is usually not contributory as polymorphonuclear predominance is seen in first few days of the viral illness. As against this, the bacterial infection is localized either to one system or one organ. Fever is moderate to start with, but it peaks by fourth or fifth day. Child looks sick and often toxic even during the interfebrile period. The diseases may localize by third or fourth day and presence as a, uh, symptoms of particular illness like in case of pneumonia or a meningitis.
રાહુલ ભાઈ હા સર કઈ પ્રોબ્લેમ છે સર આઈ થિંક એમને નેટ નો ઇશ્યુ થેવું લાગે છે અચ્છા આપણા આમ કમ્પ્લીટ ચાલી રહ્યું છે બરોબર છે વેટ કરીએ બે મિનિટ માં દેવી સર હેલો હિયર હી આઈ એમ સ્ટીલ જસ્ટ ડિસ્કનેક્ટેડ બીકોઝ મે બી આઈ ડોન્ટ નો વાય બટ જસ્ટ આઈ વિલ રીસ્ટાર્ટ so let us understand this by the various cases a 5 year old girl presented with high grade fever and chills four days duration headache vomiting alert and active headache subsided with fever interfebrile period was normal fever reoccurred after a gap of 3 days vitals were stable only a mild paler was seen which investigations of course a routine line of investigations on day 4 or 5 cbc ps urine ns1 rapid antigen for malaria scpt and crp the word about c cbc it has more of a negative predictive value if it gives a positive result of course fine but it has more of a negative predictive value gives a baseline value of hemoglobin as well as different cell lines often confirms malaria however negative peripheral smear does not rule out malaria if there is a presence of an abnormal cells ben cells atypical lymphocyte it may indicate a specific conditions and extremes of count should be looked at and whether check whether two or more cell lines are affected so this is the uh, interpretation of cbc in cases of short duration of fever if wbc is increased polymorphs are increased with normal platelet hemoglobin it is likely to be an acute bacterial infection if wbc is are less with less polymorphs decreasing eosinophils likely to be a typhoid or even it could be because of an acute viral infection if wbc is are decreased polymorph are increased low lymphocyte decreased platelet with normal or increased hemoglobin the likely diagnosis is dengue against against this if the hemoglobin is decreasing with this features the likely diagnosis is malaria so coming back to our index case where the hemoglobin was 9 platelet our total count uh, 5400 platelets 80000 and on peripheral smear we found in pyx malaria so message here with regards to pyx malaria is there is they usually present with erratic pattern of fever spleen and river are usually palpable and paler may be there the microscopic examination is gold standard one should look at both thick and thin smear thin smear in order to identify spaces where thick smear in order to ident- identify the parasite itself but when microscopy is not available not reliable not feasible because of any reason then one should can go for rapid antigen test but remember here it is not useful for follow up and prognostications other cbc findings are anemia thrombocytopenia and the eosinophilia next case a 6 year old girl from a urban slum in a monsoon season presented with fever of high grade 100 200 3 with headache chills present similar cases were found in this surrounding how do we proceed of course the possibilities remain same viral fever dengue malaria it could be uti or even enteric fever so investigations were sent symptomatic management was started hydration was checked investigations showed uh, reasonably no a normal platelet normal uh, total count psmp negative but here it was positive ns1 is a very useful rapid test good specific ct high sensitivity in first few days of the illness 90% in case of primary infection 70% in case of secondary infection remember your serology igg and igm are positive late in the disease so on day 5 of the same patient there is a reappearance of fever rash develop maculopapillar and petechial rash over extremities abdominal pain vomiting puffy face ill look started with tachycardia and 
falling blood pressure. Repeated in, repeat investigations showed increasing hemoglobin, decreasing total count with decreasing platelets. So friend, remember, this is a typical presentation of a dengue. And this is a chart that one should really know it. It gives a different phases of the dengue fever. First is a febrile phase, first couple of days. Second is a very critical phase where the, on the contrary, fever is coming down, but the child is critical. Usually complications like shock and bleeding appears in this phase. And then finally, the recovery phase. Remember here, viremia is only seen in the febrile phase. Rest of the uh, phases, viremia is not present. And as far as the laboratory count is concerned, hematocrite is usually low in the initial phase, then it increases and then comes back to the normal. Platelets high in the beginning, but then comes down very rapidly, lowest in the critical phase and then in the recovery phase, platelets improve. NS1 is positive in the first couple of days. IgG and IgM are positive in the late phase of the illness. Next case, a one-year-old female, fever of three days duration, 102 with vomiting, no other complaints, clinically normal, partial response to paracetamol, looks sick with poor appetite and some dehydration. Same blood investigations primary were sent. And this were the investigations. Total count was raised. CRP was high. And this time, urine clicked the diagnosis. It was 80 to 100 persons. So it was an UTI. Of course, in UTI, the final confirmation is by urine uh, culture only. And here, E. coli were seen. Colony count is very important, depending upon from where urine sample was collected. Here, the role of CRP. CRP is an acute phase reactant marker of an infection and inflammation, more helpful in ruling out bacterial infection. In isolation has a very limited value and it should be always interpreted with the clinical finding and other parameters like CBC. Initially, we thought it is just a bacterial, uh, it is positive in bacterial infection only, but now recently adenovirus infection has shown us it is positive in the, uh, even high in the three digits in case of such viruses. But it's useful as a guide in response to the antibiotic therapy in proven bacterial infection. So message here is UTI is the commonest cause of fever without focus, often missed diagnosis, and it is a culture diagnosis. Appropriate method of collection of urine sample is very important. And once you diagnose UTI, your work is not over because you need to further investigate the child in order to find out any anatomical malformations or the injury to the kidney. And next case, a seven-year-old boy, fever five days duration, 101, 102 with vomiting, oral, oral intake reduced, paracetamol started, partial response. Child looked ill, some dehydration, no meningeal sign is present. What is the likely diagnosis and how do we proceed? These are the, uh, some of the investigations. Total count marginally decreased. Platelet again marginally decreased. But checked here, eosinophil is zero. This is an almost hallmark of enteric fever. And here the blood culture was sent, which was positive for the uh, S-typhi, sensitive to the ceftriaxone. So as far as enteric fever is concerned, CBC has more of a negative predictive value. Of course, it is represented by leukopenia, thrombocytopenia, and eosinopenia. Blood culture is a gold standard in the diagnosis of enteric fever because salmonella are easy to culture. And this also gives you an antibiotic susceptibility. Other serological tests like Typhidot and Vidal should be less reliable tests and it should be interpreted very cautiously. So friend, to differentiate between the various epidemic fevers, if child presents with fever, chills, itches, myalgia, and respiratory predominant symptoms, this is likely to be a viral fever or a flu-like illnesses. If fever with or without chill, anemia, splenomegaly, and thrombocytopenia, likely diagnosis is malaria. If fever, retroorbital pain, rash with muscle pain, rising hemoglobin with pollen platelets, the diagnosis is dengue. If fever beyond four days, sick-looking child with liver and spleen, 
thrombocytopenia and leukopenia. Diagnosis is enteric fever, fever, myalgia, multisystem involvement, and thrombocytopenia. The likely diagnosis can be a brucellosis, leptospira, rickets cell, or even other non-infectious diseases. So last case, an eight-month-old boy presented with fever of two days duration, started on amoxiclav, cefixime were added, no response, day five, child became febrile, but there was an incessant cry, lethargy with bulging anterior fontanelle and refusal to feed. The possibilities could be a partially treated acute bacterial meningitis, acute otitis media, or even UTI. Here the investigations were seen. Total count was raised, CRP raised, blood culture was sterile, and the diagnosis was clinched by CSF examination, which showed a high protein, low sugar, and a cell's presence of a cells. So, friend, the message here is let the disease evolve. Do not prescribe antibiotics without localization or microbial evidence. Irrational use of antibiotics should be avoided because it masks the disease, masks the severity of the disease. It gives a false sense of security, confuses lab parameter, and thereby confuses the clinician. So this is an algorithm of fever of short duration. Check whether there is an, any presence of red flag sign. If not, check whether specific localizing signs are present or not. If present, Check whether it is single organ or a specific part of a system is involved, like tonsillitis, pharyngitis, or UTI, probable bacterial etiology, and one should start a specific antibiotic. If multiple organs or a different part of the same system are affected, like in case of URT and LITI or respiratory and GIT, the probability is viral etiology, only symptomatic therapy is required. If localizing signs and symptoms are absent, Check whether the child is toxic or non-toxic. If non-toxic, it could be likely to be a viral infection or malaria. If child is toxic, it could be because of typhoid fever, UTI or occult bacteremia. Start a specific antibiotic. So this is in short, a uh, short summary of the short duration of fever. So key message at the end, take home, identify and stabilize sick child, let the disease evolve, let the infection localized and the tempo of investigation depends on the level of sickness and clinical findings and paracetamol is the drug of choice. Thank you all. Thank you, Agnes, sir. Thank you both the speaker for giving nice uh, talk or both the topics are very useful in our day-to-day -day practice. I will hand over the mic to Dr. Deerin, sir. To say for what of thanks. Thank you, Dr. Kamlesh. Uh, first of all, I'm on the behalf of College of GP GSP. I'm very much thankful to both the speakers, Dr. Bardevi and Dr. Ignacio, for giving a very excellent knowledge, very helpful for all of us, all the family physicians, and also for sharing your uh, experience and the knowledge very shortly but very briefly. I'm also thankful to Dr. Anil Bhai for uh, being with us for a short while. I'm also thankful to Dr. Madhavi for always guiding and always with us for any epidemic, pro any uh, academic program. And I'm also thankful to all the doctors who are online with us have joined this uh, session. And I hope uh, same type of response during the, all the programs. And we will give every month one scientific session webinar, uh, probably. So there may be change in uh, uh, shorter, but we will inform you later on. Thank you so much. Announce Cardinal. Next, See, next uh, our next uh, four CME uh, will be on uh, Madhavi is agreed the third or second Thursday, and it will be the topic is decided as an emergency in family practice. So I request all of the, all of general family physician, is, which uh, sort of emergency do you want to uh, learn from our extreme speaker? Kindly message to me or Diren or any Madhavi. So that we can uh, plan the very uh, precisely the emergency and family practice uh, topic as a topic. So see you in the fourth CME. Thank you all. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. I think there is no question. No, there is no question in the chat box. Okay. Uh, so thank we you. conclude the CME.